Let us begin with a prayer, as we always do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you once again for bringing us together. We thank you that we have this opportunity to even continue to delve into your word, even when we are sheltered in place in our homes. Lord, we thank you and we ask you to continue blessing us. We ask for your healing presence for all our brothers and sisters, for all our community members who are battling with any form of disease, those who have contracted COVID-19, those who are struggling with other diseases. Lord, touch them. May they continue to feel your presence in spite of the problems and the challenges that they are going through. And bless our session tonight. Help us that what we talk about today may inspire us, may inspire our celebration of how you became one of us to help us, to teach us, to love, to serve you, and to worship you. We make our prayer always in the name of Jesus, the Emmanuel, God with us forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, um, in order to, to talk about Christmas in the Bible, or Christmas and the Bible, um, uh, I came up with these, these uh, topics uh, to deal with. So, I'll take them one after the other, and we will see, I will say a few things about it, and, and go on to the next, and then to the next, to the end. And then I'm sure that we'll get enough chance to ask some more questions and, and to, to discuss some more. Uh, so we're going to talk about what Christmas is, or what is Christmas, when we say Christmas, what, what are we talking about? And then we will talk about the, the mystery of Christmas, which is the incarnation, uh, uh, which, is, which inspires what Christianity is all about. Uh, so although we talk about Christmas, but we will talk about the incarnation itself. And when we know what the incarnation is, then, then, then the whole understanding of Christmas makes sense. Then we'll go on to uh, the, uh, talk about the dating of Christmas. We'll, specifically, we'll talk about December 25th, whether that was the day Jesus was born or not. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say a few words about that, and then we'll move on to uh, the stories that we have in the Bible that talk about the birth of Jesus. Uh, uh, that, that have a relationship with the birth of Jesus. So we'll talk about John's story, but John does not mention the birth of Jesus. Uh, John rather talks about the incarnation. And so we will establish that, and then we'll look at uh, uh, where that fits in Matthew's story and Luke's story. These are the two Gospels that talk about the birth of Jesus. The other Gospels don't talk about the birth of Jesus. They don't have any story uh, like that. Mark and John don't have. Uh, then then uh, we will talk about how the Western Church and the Eastern Church, because the, the Christian Church divided around, uh, 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 around the 11th century, uh, I think it's 1054. I, I don't have the exact uh, year. I think it's around the 11th century. The Christian church separated into, into the Eastern Greek church. I mean, the church was Greek for a long time. The New Testament was written in Greek. Okay. Uh, Latin was later. Latin church, the Roman church was later. So when the church separated, finally, totally separated, uh, we had the Greek Orthodox church, uh, Christianity, and then we have the, uh, so the Greek Orthodox Christianity is the Eastern Church. It's the Eastern Church uh, 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 with its center in Consta uh, uh, Constantinople, which was Rome at that time, uh, uh, in present-day Istanbul. So those of you who have been to Istanbul in, in, in Turkey, that was the center of, that was Rome. At that, in the early days, it was Rome. Okay, that was where Constantine actually lived. That was where our faith was put together. 
in the Hagia Sophia, that temple that was there was a Christian church. That was where the, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, God from God, like that was where it was put together. Okay. Uh, uh, so that was the Eastern church, uh, Greek, and they spoke Greek. And then you have the Western church, which was a Latin church, a uh, Roman church. The Western Church, Latin Church, uh, the Roman Church. Uh, uh, so those two churches separated. How they celebrate Christmas, um, uh, how they celebrate the incarnation, uh, you will see uh, 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 Eastern Church taking Matthew's perspective and then uh, the Western Church taking Luke's perspective of, of, of the incarnation. Okay. So then... Um, uh, so let's let's first take the uh, let's take the first uh, thing that is what is Christmas, uh, and we say Christmas is a solemnity. Uh, if it's solemnity, it's a solemn celebration. It's a, it's it's actually it was something that was a, a celebration to commemorate the incarnation of God's word, uh, God's word becoming human being, uh, God's word into humanity at the birth of Jesus the Christ. So uh, it's a solemnity that was a, a kind of celebration that was um, uh, deemed as, as something that happened when Jesus was born. So Jesus' birth uh, uh, was, uh, uh, the, the Christians believed that when Jesus was born, something happened. Jesus' birth was a symbol of something that God had promised. Okay, so they, they had that in mind. They already knew from the scriptures that God was going to do something. Uh, at some point, the, the word of God is going to become flesh. That God is going to come into this world. They chose that celebration to mark the moment when that word became flesh. And for them, the moment that that word became flesh was when Jesus was born. Okay, so, so Christmas was that. Christmas is us celebrating, uh, celebrating the word becoming flesh uh, in the birth of Jesus Christ. We say that Jesus Christ's birth is that, that word becoming flesh, that promise that God made. Okay. So uh, this is one of the ways to understand Christmas. Uh, 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 Christmas is a celebration. Uh, it's a celebration. But the word Christmas itself is a Christ mass, uh, Christ mass. Actually, the Catholic Church put that word together. Okay. The mass there was supposed to be the mission, the mass that we celebrate. And, and Christ's mass uh, is how those two were put together, uh, is, the, is, the, is the mass for the Christ, for the birth of Christ. So another way to uh, uh, continue uh, expounding what Christmas is, is that, so Christmas is a one day, it was a one day celebration. It's a, it's a one day celebration that extends, that is extended through eight days first, and then it's extended further. Uh, uh, so, so there was a Christmas season rather than a Christmas day uh, uh, itself. The celebration itself is a day, but expanded into eight days. So what we call, so when we celebrate Christmas on December 25th, we celebrate Christmas the next day. We continue celebrating the incarnation on, Mon uh, on, on 26th, on 27th, 28th, 28th, up to the eighth day. We continue to celebrate Christmas. Uh, uh, the, the Mass does not change. We celebrate the same Mass on every day after Christmas to eight days. Then we start after, after, uh, uh, after the eighth day, we begin to celebrate the Christmas season. And the season goes on. We celebrate the season all the way to uh, the Feast of Epiphany, uh, uh, which is 
the Sunday uh, uh, after the feast of the Epiphany, which is the Sunday after Epiphany, that is when we celebrate the baptism of the Lord. That's when the Christmas season ends. Okay, so so uh, Christmas season begins on December twenty fourth and goes all the way to uh, 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 to the baptism of the Lord. The reason why it's December twenty fourth is that. The Christians always celebrated the, the eve of every solemn celebration. The night before is actually the night that they celebrate the Eucharist. You know, so, so, uh, so the Eucharist was known like the Last Supper. It was a supper. It was an evening meal. Okay. So that evening meal uh, is always commemorated. Uh, and, say, uh, and so every celebration has an eve. The, the day before. It begins with the day before. So although they chose to celebrate Christmas on December 25th, they begin on 24th. Okay. So a eve is part of the celebration. Yeah. So the celebration goes all the way, December 24th, all the way to the Sunday after the Epiphany. Okay. Uh, somewhere around January uh, 6th. Or somewhere there. Okay. Um, so it's a Christmas, we talk about Christmas season rather than Christmas day. So Christmas, like I said, is second in importance to Easter um, because the, the Christians were not celebrating Christmas as such. Yeah, there was no Christmas for, for about 100, 200 years. Okay? But there was Easter. Easter was, the, Easter was the celebration of Christ, Christians because Easter was the redemption, was the, was the um, um, Easter was, when we say Jesus Christ came to save us, Easter was the thing that Jesus did to save us. So it was the, the celebration, it was the resurrection. And that is how they began to think about Jesus' life. Throughout Jesus' life, nobody really knew what exactly was going on. Many of them, the, 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 the Bible was not, the New Testament was not written whilst Jesus was living. The New Testament was composed after Jesus had died, after the resurrection. They composed the New Testament after Jesus' death and resurrection. And from, from the experience of the resurrection, they began writing backward. See, they were going back and, and composing and everything that, that links to the resurrection. It was not that they were composing things when Jesus was living. They didn't even understood, uh, they didn't understand Jesus. The, the disciples did not, under, did not grasp fully what is going on. They were just following this man. It was after he died and rose from the dead and left them, when they felt that spirit come upon them, they then began to understand what this man was telling them all along, his life. And that is how they began to compose his life. And uh, somehow we believe that, that Mary must have spilled, told some of the story about Jesus' birth. Uh, uh, because on the cross, we heard that uh, Jesus saw, uh, looked at, according to John, Jesus saw uh, John and Mary standing there. And Jesus said, woman, behold your son. And he told John, behold your mother. And the Bible says from that moment on, John took Mary into his home. So we believe that Mary actually lived with John for the rest of her life. So we believe that she might have told John a lot of stories about how Jesus was born. Uh, about, uh, unfortunately, John does not give us the story of, uh, the Gospel of John does not give us the story of Jesus' birth. The only one who would have learned the story of Jesus' birth. So the Christians actually wrote the story of Jesus' life from their, from their, um, from their uh, inspiration. 
and put a few things together, a few historical facts, but, but most of them were from faith background, uh, from faith. They believed it, and so they wrote it out. Okay. Uh, so you will see a lot of problems when you are studying the stories about the birth of Jesus. Uh, you have a lot of, there's a lot of problems, especially the Gospel of Luke. Things don't add up at all if you measure it with, with, with uh, 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 scientific history. It, those things don't, don't, don't add up. The, the story, he was not accurate at all was wrong at every turn. Some of the things that he was saying uh, took place, did not take place. Okay, okay so now let's talk about uh, uh, was, was Jesus born on December 25th? And I believe that, I want to believe that all of you know that that was not, this, <laughs> it was not the date. Uh, uh, the date, the exact date of the birth of Jesus is unknown. It is unknown. No one can tell you that this exact date that Jesus, that, or, or December 25th was the date. No, it wasn't the date. However, uh, December 25th is not in the Bible. It's not given to us even in the Bible either. Yeah. We are not given in the Bible. We are not given in the story of Matthew about Jesus' birth. We are not given uh, December 25th. We are not given uh, in Luke. We are not giving that in John. Uh, John has no dates about, about his stories. Instead, um, uh, we know that the 4th century Christians in Rome, uh, the 4th century, is, uh, 300, 380 all the way to 400, the Christians who were living in Rome uh, were already, we found that they were already celebrating the birth day of Jesus on December 25th. They were celebrating that. They were found celebrating. I mean, history, our history and archaeological finds and things like that found out that the Christians already in the fourth century were celebrating the birthday of, of Jesus on December 25th. Now, so the theory, there are two theories to, sh to prove why they were doing that, why they were celebrating the birthday of Jesus on December 25th. The first theory was that we know from history, from, from secular history and scientific history, that in 274 AD, 274 AD, that was before the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, that was before Roman Catholicism came about. Uh, there was Catholic Church, but there was no Roman Catholic Church. Um, in 274, Emperor Aurelian, who was the Roman Emperor, established December 25th as the Dies Natalis Solis Invicti, which means the birthday of the Syrian God. The Syrian God was a sun god. The, 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 the Syrians worshipped the sun, um, a god, who, who was deemed as the god of the sun. So they were worshiping. And remember, Rome at that time, when Christianity got to Rome, Rome at that time was pagan. There were a lot of, there were a lot of religions, pagan religions in Rome. Rome was not, was not a Christian. Uh, it was Jerusalem that you have, Jerusalem and Syria and other places that you have Christianity moved into those places before Christianity went to Rome. And even when Christianity was in Rome, they were a little small sect. Christianity was a little small sect. There was a, a, a suspect sect. They were persecuted. They lived in catacombs. They couldn't come out to celebrate. They were hiding to celebrate. When they hear somebody at the gate, they all shivering because they were being arrested and killed and hanged on a cross and hanged and burned. There were powerful religions in Rome at that time, like Zoroastrianism. There were a worship of the emperor, emperor worship. There was uh, uh, the Egyptian cults, Egyptian cults, bigger, bigger religious sects than Christianity. 
So one of those is this Dies Natal, uh, the birthday of the Syrian sun god, was celebrated on 25th. Okay, that was in 274, way before the uh, uh, fourth century. So the Christians, what the Christians did was that when finally they were asked to come out, when 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 the emperor proclaimed religious liberty. There was, an, there was a proclamation of religious liberty called the Edict of Milan. Uh, when that was proclaimed, all religions were allowed to worship, to come out freely and exercise. And that is all the Christians, uh, they read, they knew from the Old Testament, they knew from the last prophecy uh, in the Bible, in the Old Testament prophecy, was Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. Uh, you find it there, uh, which mentions the sun. Uh, 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 the sun, the sun God. So they, they chose that day. They thought about the sun God, and they took that day, 25th, in order to counter this, the pagan celebration, uh, uh, and give that day to their own uh, savior, their own God, uh, the true son of righteousness, which is the son of justice. Well, Malachi chapter 4, verses uh, uh, 1 and 2 says this. The Lord Almighty says, The day is coming when all proud and evil people will burn like straw. On that day, they will burn up and there will be nothing left of them. But for you, this is verse two, but for you who obey me, my saving power will rise on you like the sun and bring healing like the sun's rays. You will be as free and happy as calves let out of a stall. Okay, the sun, sun of righteousness. Jesus, therefore, was known for them as that son of righteousness. They wanted to claim the son of justice or the son of righteousness to Jesus Christ and also take, take some of the followers, those, instead of going to, to the temple of the, son, uh, the Syrian God, you can come to the Christian celebration instead. So that's what they did, and, and they took they took. December 25th. They chose the day because it, it, it celebrated the sun god. But the sun god, uh, for them, the sun god, their sun god is uh, Jesus, who is named as the son of righteousness in the prophecy. Okay. So, the second theory, the second theory is more, is more like the first one. They all depended on the same idea. But this time around, it was theologians, Christian theologians uh, in, the, in, the, in the third century actually made some calculations. They made some calculations. Uh, although they chose the, the day of the sun god, they made some calculations to coincide with it. Uh, and, 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 to, and to, uh, uh, to make it a little bit more meaningful. Uh, so uh, they, in the third century, they used the autumn equinox. Uh, they actually used the equinoxes and the uh, solstices, okay? Uh, uh, the summer solstice and the, and the autumn equinox. Uh, so what was happening was that they, all, they first of all fixed, they fixed the conception of John the Baptist. Okay, that, so that's, they started from John the Baptist. Okay, uh, they fixed the conception of John the Baptist on the autumn equinox, and therefore they they calculated that John therefore will be born on June twenty fourth, which is the summer solstice, following the uh, autumn e equinox. Okay. So, so once they established that, well, I mean, for, this is from their own uh, calculations, they established that. Then they looked at the Bible and saw uh, in Luke chapter 1, verse 26, the angel told Mary that Elizabeth, her cousin, 
was also pregnant, six months. So Jesus' conception will be uh, six months after John's conception. So they started calculating Jesus' conception six months later, and, and they brought it to uh, the fact that Jesus' conception was at the spring equinox, and therefore that will be March area, March 24th. Okay. So then adding nine months to that will lead to December 25th. So they, they made this, this calculations, they made this gymnastics uh, in order to, to, to put some, some numbers, uh, to put some meaningful numbers to why we celebrate uh, uh, Christmas on December 25th. Uh, so this is, this is what we have as at the moment, as at the moment. But we all know that, that December 25th is not a sure date of the birth of Jesus. So what is important is therefore, uh, the Second Vatican Council tells us, what is important is not to be worried about dates. Because if you want to be worried about dates, if you read the Bible, all the things that you read there, most of them don't add up. The dates don't make sense. Uh, like the Gospels, Luke talks about there was a census uh, under the governor called Quirinius. Uh, 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 and, and we cannot find anything like that. Okay, uh, uh, So the stories were put together in order to explain only the word becoming flesh. And that's what we should be looking at. And so if, uh, what you need to know is that, is that Christmas celebrates. It's, it's a celebration, but leads us to understand why the word became flesh and what the word became flesh means to you and I, what it means to our lives. The heart of Christmas is none of those uh, Christmas trees and whatever. The heart of Christmas is nothing to do with that. The heart of Christmas has to do with how the word, how a word inspires you to act in love. How a word, the word of God, how, how the scriptures, how a, a wisdom, a kind of enlightenment, a kind of belief changes to become an action in your life. How, that's, that's, the, that's the incarnation. Uh, the word take on flesh, uh, incarnation. That is the main thing about Christmas. Uh, uh, everything else is, is meant to lead to that. So let us look at the stories. Uh, so the Christians, as I said, separated uh, and they all celebrate the incarnation. Uh, they all celebrate the incarnation. All Christians celebrate the incarnation. But the Eastern Church, which is the main divide between, in Christianity, was the Eastern Church and the Western Church. Okay. The Eastern Church uh, placed its emphasis. They took Matthew's understanding of how the word became flesh. Okay. Uh, the Gospel of John is what tells us how the word became flesh. Matthew and Luke give us stories, history, something like a history. Now, the Eastern Christian Church took on uh, the Magi. So when you, read, when you read Matthew's story, it talks about the Magi. The Magi came, you know, the three kings came to worship Jesus. That's the story that, and that, that is what, Christians celebrate as the epiphany, because epiphany means manifestation, showing, showing Jesus Christ as the key, as the savior for the entire world, okay? Not just uh, the Jewish community. So Matthew talks about that. The Eastern Church emphasizes that so they celebrate Christmas, they celebrate the incarnation, not on December 25th, but they celebrate it on Epiphany. Epiphany for the Eastern Church is Christmas. So you will see when we celebrate Christmas on the 25th, uh, the Eastern Orthodox Church, they don't celebrate on that day. 
It is on, on, on January uh, uh, 6, somewhere January 6 or 2nd, that they celebrate Christmas, the Feast, feast of Epiphany. Okay. So because their emphasis was on Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now, the Western Church, the Western Roman Church stayed with December 25th. Okay. They stayed with December 25th. Uh, uh, let me put it in another way. They stayed with Luke's story. They stayed with Luke's story of the, uh, uh, of the birth of Jesus. So that story only talks about angel, uh, 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 shepherds, Jewish shepherds, uh, Jewish shepherds were informed that the Savior has been born. Jewish shepherds who were in Bethlehem were informed that the Savior has been born for them. And so uh, they, were, they were able to run there and, and, and solve the baby Jesus. That is, that is, that is the Latin church's uh, uh, perspective. They celebrated, and so they celebrated that on, on December 25th. Their incarnation is the, uh, is the story that Luke was telling. The Eastern churches is Matthew. The Western church is Luke. Uh, so, what am I talking about? Incarnation, the incarnation, the incarnation. That is found in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. But the most important verses is John chapter 1, verse 1. And then you go to John chapter 1, verse 4. Uh, 14, I'm sorry. 14. So, chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Then in verse 14, it says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory of the Father. Okay, So that was the heart of the Christian stories. This is the heart of the Christian story, that, that the Word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. Now how that happened, we are saying, is in the birth of Jesus. Jesus is that word of God who became flesh in the womb of Mary. We gave, we gave Mary to in the womb of Mary and then was born as, as the Savior. So, so you have a story and then you have the explanation of the story, what that means. So you have the stories Jesus was born like everybody. There was all those stories around him. Joseph was this and this one was that. And they moved from Nazareth and came to Bethlehem. And there was Quirinius who was a governor of Syria. And this was the census. There were three magis from the east. All these stories are trying to tell us what the word become flesh means. Okay. What God becoming like us. God's word, our life. How God become, became like us. And that these stories are going to help us to be able to live our lives. So the stories in the Bible, uh, another way to be able to understand this whole idea about Christmas is that the stories in the Bible were all written, most, mostly they were all written backward. If you are going to be a good, if you are going to be a good uh, reader of the Bible and someone who can understand the Bible deeply, you should always look at the biblical stories as stories that were written from the resurrection. Uh, the resurrection was the focus point, and everything was written to tie into the resurrection. The Christmas was written like that. The Christmas stories were written from the point of view of the resurrection of Jesus. And they wrote the story to tie in. It's like, it's like the way, it's like the way um, if I'm going to write my biography, for instance, you remember, if I'm going to write my biography, the stories around me in, in, um, in, Livermore in St. Charles are the best, they're the, the ones that I know best. Huh? I know those stories because they are close to me. They are just recent stories. So those are the ones I know well. 
The stories in my past in Ghana are very remote. And I can tell the story, but when I tell those stories, I will be telling the story, I will make sure that the story ends here. But I have to tell it in a way that ends in Livermore. Okay, so that is, that's the way we, that's how biographies are written. Biographies are written not, not when things are going on, but from a particular perspective, uh, people write their biographies from where they are today. And they keep going back and keep going back and writing and constructing the story. But the story has to end where they are. This is exactly how the scriptures were written. They were written from the perspective of, to, of the resurrection, when they finally got it right, when they finally understood what was going on, then they began to compose. Uh, 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 do you? Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. When Jesus rose from the dead, uh, two of his disciples left the company of, of Jesus, they were going back to the village from where they came, from where they joined Jesus. They joined, Jesus was going about as an itinerant preacher and they joined that company. And they went on and on and on until Jerusalem and, they, and, and then Jesus was arrested and killed. So they were like, they had not experienced the resurrection yet. So they were going back to their home. The Bible says they were going back to their home. And whilst they, are, they were on the way, the Bible says Jesus joined them on the way. And, and Jesus asked them, uh, what are you talking about as you walk your way? And they said, oh, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know what has happened? And he said, what, what sort of things happened? And they said, uh, how Jesus, was, uh, was, who was the Nazarene, he was, we, he was preaching, he was doing so great, many, many great things, but he was arrested and killed. And we were hoping that, this is what they told Jesus, we were hoping that he was the one who was going to save Israel, but he has now been arrested and killed. So we are disappointed. We are going back home, going back to where we came. So the Bible says that Jesus told them and says, oh, how foolish you are. Don't you remember what he told you before he died? Didn't he tell you that he was going to suffer, he was going to be arrested, he's going to be killed, and then on the third day he will rise from the dead? Don't you remember? And so the Bible says he explained to them all the scriptures, the Old Testament and the prophecies uh, that related to Jesus Christ. And so then they got to where they were going and Jesus acted like he was going farther. So they invited him to their home and they went to eat and he took bread and broke it. And when he broke the bread, they recognized him because they had been breaking bread before. When Jesus was alive, they had been breaking bread. So Actually, Jesus broke the bread in a particular way uh, that he, he was breaking bread. And they recognized that, ah, you know, we know someone who broke bread like that. It, that's, that's the one we are talking about. Maybe you are the one. You are Jesus, right? So they recognized him. And the Bible says they wanted to cling to him and he vanished from them. And so they went back to Jerusalem and joined the rest and says, hey, we have experienced the guy. He is risen. He is actually risen. Okay. But the important thing there is, don't you remember what he told you before? Okay. What he told you before? The life of Jesus didn't click to his followers when things were happening. It was at the resurrection. So then they began telling the stories uh, and writing them down. So you, so you have other stories, a lot of stories. The Gospels tell a lot of stories. All of them were making sure that they tie in to Jesus as the Savior, his suffering, his death, his resurrection. All these stories are meant to do that. They are meant to lead us to Jesus as the Word becoming flesh, to die and to to, to save us through death. So, so we saw this the last time when we were beginning our, 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 uh, our sessions 
uh, of the Gospels. We're talking about the circumcision and presentation of Jesus in the temple. Uh, uh, that was a story. That's part of the story. These are all Jesus' infancy stories. Uh, and we talked about the flight into Egypt when Herod wanted to kill Jesus and return to Nazareth. Uh, they came back, but they, they didn't stay in Nazareth. All that story was meant to mention because when Jesus was hanged on the cross, uh, uh, the writing that was on top of his head says, um, uh, in re, in re are just the consonants. They are just the, uh, the I N R I. Um, Jesus Nazarene Regis uh, 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 Judai or Judah, Judas, uh, 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 Jewish. Jesus, the Nazarene King of the Jews. That was what was written, but the consonants just sta stand there for the entire phrase. The entire phrase is Jesus, the Nazarene king of the Jews. Inri, okay. So, so that was what Pilate wrote there because they said it was a Nazarene. So, so that experience, Jesus' kill, uh, killing and those, that phrase make the writers, the composers, to make sure that Jesus was a Nazarene actually lived in Nazareth, that Nazareth was their home, okay? So, uh, uh, and, and therefore, Luke will have to explain, the Gospel of Luke will have to, have to account for why, what they were doing in Bethlehem anyway. What were they doing in Bethlehem if they, if they live in Galilee, in Nazareth in Galilee? What were they doing in Bethlehem during the census? Even the census, the, the, the census, the one, the governor Quirinius, did not call a census at that time. I mean, historically, there are other histories that attest to exactly what happened. The story was all turned upside down. So, but Luke was using the story to, uh, using the census to bring, to bring the Galileans to Judah, in Bethlehem. To tell what, what, what they were doing there and Mary gave birth to that. So these are some of the things that we will go through some of these things as we go forward. We still study the Bible. But all I want to say is that these stories were composed to explain something deeper. So don't get stuck with a story. Let me, let, me, let me say that again. Uh, let me say the rest before I, I come back there. So you have another story, the childhood of Jesus at Nazareth. Where we're talking about, oh yeah, Jesus was the capital son. Uh, Jesus was growing up. We don't know much about that. Okay, we don't know much, much about, about Jesus' childhood years, uh, but the, the Bible mentions certain things about how he, was, he grew up uh, uh, with wisdom and was obedient unto Mary and Joseph uh, uh, growing up in Nazareth. Then we also know about the boy Jesus in the temple, okay? When Jesus, uh, when he was 12 years old, when he, he, was, he was sitting in the temple questioning the, the, the elders and debating them and, then, uh, and was left behind and they looked for him and then found him and then, then he made that remark that uh, my mother will slap me if I say that to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and don't you know I have to be in my father's business? Uh, oh yeah, really? We've been looking for you from the north to the south. <laughs> so, so anyway, but all that is meant to point out to, to this child, this history, as the moment when that word became flesh. Okay? This is all to say that this is the one that embodies God, divinity, the word, and humanity, uh, the human being. We saw him in human being, human form, but it is divinity and humanity put together. That is the incarnation. And therefore, that tells you and me, therefore, as we go forward, that we always are going to live our lives like that. The word should always become flesh in our lives. The word should always become flesh. And how does that happen that happens when you when you act when you do something 
with your fellow human being, the word is becoming flesh. When you act in goodness, in justice, in love to another human being, you have now translated an idea, a wisdom, a word into action. That's, that's, that's the incarnation. It becomes powerful. It becomes life-giving. It helps people to, to, to breathe. It helps people to live. That's, that's how it happened all the time. Okay? And that's how God is saving the world. That's how God is saving the world because Jesus came to initiate that. Jesus is the beginning of that. And that has been the way, the formula for Christians is always to make the word to become flesh. Incarnation, uh, embody. Incarnation means enfleshing, putting flesh on an idea. Ideas are in the air until they are, you put something concrete on it. Enfleshing, practical, put a practice on it. That's, that's how, uh, uh, this is the deepest, deepest meaning of Christmas. Uh, Christmas is to celebrate the incarnation. The incarnation is the formula by which we live, by which God saves the world, continues to save the world. Okay. So I'm going to stop there and we're going to have some questions. We have five questions. The first one says, so Jesus was baptized as a baby and again by John the Baptist? No. <laughs> no, we celebrate it that way. We, we just pile on the, the stories. Okay, so we are looking at the stories and we celebrate the stories. But Jesus, when we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, we're not celebrating. Jesus is already grown. <laughs> okay, uh, we put it together like that. Okay, same thing like, 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 um, uh, the resurrection of Jesus and, and his, his uh, 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 showing himself to the disciples and then Pentecost. Uh, there's a lot of, it's, it's very, very uh, 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 complicated. Uh, okay. But we celebrate, we're just celebrating events, events that took place. But it didn't take place in the timeline that we celebrated. Okay. All right. So Jesus was baptized as a grown man uh, by John, not, not uh, when he was a baby. Is the epiphany the same as the fifth joyful uh, uh, mystery of the rosary presentation of Jesus in the temple? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so that's that mystery that we saw. The presentation of the child in the temple, uh, that was when, when, uh, um, uh, Jesus and uh, Joseph and Mary respecting the Mosaic law. The Mosaic law says every child that opens the womb, the firstborn, has to be sacrificed to, 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 to Yahweh, has to be brought to the temple. But what they do is that they don't, uh, 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 the Jewish community, at the same time, although the first child has to be sacrificed, they don't allow, the, law, the same law does not allow human sacrifice. You can't. So what, is hap what happens is that you bring the child there, but you redeem the child. You have to redeem the child by bringing uh, some, some other things like animals. So a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. You can bring a lamb or you can bring something to, to purchase your child back. So it's a gesture that is made. Uh, and, and so Jesus, every child, every firstborn child has to be brought to the temple, presented, and then you, you, uh, you, you bring a goat or a sheep or a lamb. Uh, but if you cannot afford these things, you can, you can bring two young pigeons and a pair of turtle doves. And Jesus, uh, Joseph and Mary, uh, uh, the story says they were poor, so, so they couldn't afford those huge things. So they brought a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons to buy back Jesus Christ. Okay. So that was the presentation of the child in the temple. That's what we celebrate as Epiphany. And that's what Matthew says, uh, that, uh, 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 that was the day that, that uh, they celebrate Christmas, and that was the day that the uh, Magi came to see Jesus. 
Okay, is there any intentional connection between Christmas and uh, and it starting the night before and continuing for eight days and Hanukkah starting at night and continuing for eight nights? Okay, yes. Uh, so, so again, remember that the early Christians, most of them were Jewish. So they, 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 they celebrated these things. Uh, first of all, Easter coincides with the, with the, with the Jewish Passover, anyway, Pesach. Uh, Easter, Easter was, was, is the, is the surest one that we know. We don't know much about, uh, 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 December 25th has not, nothing so close to do with the exact day of, of uh, Jesus' birth. But Easter, we are more sure because Easter came from the Jewish Passover. It came from that. The Last Supper uh, uh, is, is the contest of the Last Supper is where Jesus took a second cup. So the, the, the Last Supper is celebrated this way that they will eat and then they will drink from a cup. Okay. So that was, a, that was a Jewish Passover. And every year they celebrated it. And so Jesus also celebrates like Thanksgiving Day. Jesus celebrated with his disciples because they were all Jewish. Now there was one night, the last night, the day before he would be killed, it was a Passover celebration. And when they were celebrating, they, they ate and then they drank the cup. And then Jesus took a second cup. This is the first time he ever did that. He took a second cup because the first cup represented the old relationship, the old covenant. So the second cup he pulled, he told them, this is the cup of the new covenant. And you will drink this cup with me. This is, this is my blood now. The old cup is, uh, is the grapevine and all that. But this one is my blood. And... And this is going to be the new life I'm going to give you. And I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to shed this blood so that sins may be forgiven. And so you do this always. Do this second cup in remembrance of me. Yeah. He told them that. And then the next day, he was arrested and then he went through all that and was crucified. So that was, it came from the, the Passover celebration. Jesus replaced the goat the sheep and the lamb that was used for the Passover meal, he represented that. He himself is the one whose blood is going to be shed. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I think both of these are the same question. Yes, astronomers are saying that Jupiter and Saturn will align on December 21st and appear to be one star, which may account for the wise men following the star that led them to Jesus in the, man, in the manger. So maybe December 25th is reasonable. Congratulations. <laughs> but I can tell you that, that do not make scientific theories out of the stories of the Bible. The Bible story is not meant for that. The Bible story is not, we can, and, and, and you can always come back and make some calculations. Like the theologians, they made some calculations and tied into December 25th. But that doesn't mean they were right. They're just making it a little bit more sensible. So we can do that too. You can take any, like Noah's Ark. You can make some calculations and all that, and, and then tie it over there. But that doesn't mean that it, the, the stories in the Bible are not interested in in science. They are not explaining science. They are not there for that. So they don't care if they are wrong. The, the Bible stories, they, they really have serious scientific problems. Uh, serious, very serious one. And I'm not going to tell you all of that, but they have very, very, I mean, they have, a lot of them were put together to, ex but they want to explain the morale of why you are supposed to uh, take your hard-earned tax dollars to go and support some child in South Africa. Why you should do that? That's what they're about. 
Okay? Why you have to do good in the first place? Why you have to, you have to pray? Why you have to uh, support the poor? Why the poor have, they have a right that you help them? The poor has a right. In Christian thought, in Christian, uh, the poor has right for your attention. Why? That's what the biblical stories are about. And we should discover that. Why you have to be patient in your life? Why you have to be generous? Why do you have to be a peacemaking person? Why do you have to be merciful? Why do you have to be all day? Why do you have to forgive someone's sins against, someone does wrong against you? Why? Why? So that is what they are about. They are not there to explain why the sun moves from left to right. That's, that's, the Bible is not interested in that. So if, the, if you read a story that is telling you that, there is a deeper thing. There is a deeper thing you have to look for. And not stop by Jonah was swallowed by the whale. Uh, uh, okay. Don't, don't beat yourself. Like, oh, how can that happen? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Follow the story. Follow the story. And then reflect on the story and ask yourself, who is God? What is God here? Who can God be? And what is God doing here? And what is God teaching me? What value is God teaching me here? Okay. And you will find something if you really give it a thought. If you don't read it like a newspaper that was informing you that a meaning just jumps to, at you. If you read a news story, a newspaper story, if you're a journalist, you're writing a newspaper story, you have to write it in a way that the meaning jumps on the, on the, on the reader right away. Otherwise, you're, you're not going to sell. <laughs> you're not going to sell. So you got to look for stories that, that are very sensational and write them out and let the people pick, pick it. Headlines. They just see the headline. Oh, yeah, I got to buy the paper. That's not the same way that the Bible is written. The Bible is coded. It's a code. These words are codes. You need to crack those codes. If you crack those codes, you, you to crack those codes, you have to use, you have to pray, you have to reflect, you have to think about Jesus Christ. You have to have Jesus in the back of your mind, who Jesus is. The fact that Jesus is someone who loved us so much to death. That's the kind of person, that's the perspective you have to take. And then certain things begin to unfold to you as you read these stories. And that is the word of God. Now, like we always say, when we say the word of God, we don't mean the writing that you're seeing there. That's not the word of God. That's English. <laughs> that's a story. That's literature. Okay, that's literature. That's a proverb. That's a, uh, a, 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 a historical story. That's, that's a, a poem. The Psalms are poems. Yeah. That, a, 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 and so on and so forth. So they are not the word of God, but, but they contain the word of God. If you give it the thought, they can lead you to. Uh, the word of God is encapsulated in them. So you read it and then you pray over it and reflect on it with a viewpoint of, of Jesus Christ, what you already know about Jesus Christ, you will receive a message. That message that you receive after that process, that message that you receive is the word of God. Okay. The word of God is in there. So, so this is what uh, uh, Christmas is, and that is why we call on you, all, call everyone, as we celebrate Christmas, we should, as adult Christians, we should already establish this, that, yeah, we know we are doing all these things, but uh, we know that the reason for us doing all these things, these lights and all these things, and Christmas tree and that and, and whatever, uh, they are all supposed to get at the word becoming flesh. Okay. Let everybody know that the fifth question was really the same thing. Okay, the fifth question is the same thing uh, about uh, the calculation of uh, trying to make scientific calculations from the Bible 
to like uh, uh, let me add this one like you see those people who are like the world is going to end in and then they, they choose a, a year they have tried several times it never occurred <laughs> they didn't okay again okay. and some so keep doing that they still keep keep doing that and, and deceiving people all the time that they can calculate uh, looking at the bible they calculate when the world is going to come to an end look i tell you the whole world is not coming to an end you will come to an end. <laughs> you, you, your world, you are going to die. And with your death, the whole world is not dying. No, no. People, those who are in the womb, also have to come to this world and enjoy. Enjoy what God has created. The world will be renewed. It will be renewed. It will be renewed. But you will come to an end. And sometimes many people, they, they know that they are coming to an end, so they want the whole world to come to an end. No, 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 no. You got to check out. Somebody else has to come in. <laughs> We're all going to die. We're going to leave this world, and the world will continue. But your world is the world. You have to make your world the world. And therefore, you should make good use of what you got right now. If you don't, if you don't do it right now, and, and it takes you by surprise, uh, you fall tomorrow, uh, you lose. <laughs> Instead, every day you live like it's the, it's the end of the world. And you make sure that you take the opportunity you have right now. Uh, if you have to forgive somebody, right? Don't, don't postpone it. Don't put it to tomorrow. You don't know you're going to see tomorrow. If you have something to enjoy, enjoy it today. Yeah, I, yeah, you can save money for retirement. I'm, I'm saving money for retirement. <laughs> I need to retire. I'm, I'm thinking about retirement. But, but I still, I still, I'm making sure every day, telling myself that if I should, if I should get out, if I should collapse before entering the church, uh, I, 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 I want to have, have, have being satisfied. So sometimes when I'm getting out of my house, getting out of my room, I make sure I put things in, 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 in uh, arrange the room well because <laughs> I don't want people to come into my, my room and see things all. <laughs> but that's just to say that, uh, brothers and sisters, no, uh, uh, the world, the world will, will continue, but our world is what we have. You don't have after you die. You don't have that. That is God's uh, prerogative. But now till the time you, you die, this is your world. Do something with it right now. Okay. So, uh, one comment. Thank you so much, Father Kwame. I was enlightened today from your explanation. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I hope that uh, I have not confused you even more, but uh, we are going to have the time. Please send me questions. We're going to find time to continue to discuss some of these things, but to make us adult, mature Christians, to understand what we are doing. Yeah. Okay. Happy Christmas, everybody.